Okay. If I can find a copy of the. Um... Okay, I would like to uh, bring back into motion the uh, Cohasset Select Board meeting of October, of uh, November 1st, Tuesday. Uh, we entered in at six o'clock. We went into at 6.30. We went into executive session. We're coming out of executive session. So now um, I'm calling the meeting back into order and I'm gonna call roll call uh, of present. Diane? Diane Kennedy here. Jean? Jean Hilly Dippel here. Corey? Corey Evans here. Paul? Paul Green. Jack Creighton here. Okay. Um, we customarily start our meetings with a public comment period. Anybody in the public who has something they'd like to say? Um, so anybody in the in here wishes to speak? Tracy, do we have anybody um, online? Okay, that's good. Okay, we'll start with the public hearing and the tax allocation for fiscal year 23. Okay, the, the select board for the town of Cohasset will conduct a public hearing under chapter 20, section 56, as amended by chapter 79 of the Act of 1983 on Tuesday, November 1st, 2022 at uh, 7.05. It is now later, it's starting at uh, 7.45 at 91 Sawyer Street, Cohasset, Mass, 02025. Or residents may join by the following link. And there's a copy of a link. I won't read that. The purpose of the hearing will be to review the issue of allocating local property tax among the five property classes for fiscal year 2023. The select board and the board of assessors will provide information regarding the various policy decisions available. All interested persons and or parties wishing to be heard will be afforded the opportunity to be heard at this time. And that's by this Cohasset Select Board. Yep. Great Quill, Director of Assessing. Um, the classification here in this 2023. Come on, Mr. Gene. Yeah, that's easy. Close the mic. That's okay. Okay, so the purpose of the hearing is to allocate the tax level Why don't you all property. By yourself again, Mary, for Will, the Will, Director of Assessing. Okay. Okay. All right, so the purpose of the hearing is to allocate the tax levy across all property classes. Um, the first, Tracy has slides, all right. Um, the first, um, step in the process is to identify the percentage of residential, commercial, industrial, and personal properties by value. Uh, there's 93% uh, residential in Cohasset valued at 3.4 billion, commercial 200 million at 5%, industrial 1.7 million, and personal pro at 0.04%, 4 .04 and personal property is valued at 37 million at 9% less 0.9%. The total value of the town collectively is 3.7 billion. The, for the purpose of this classification, we combine commercial, industrial, and personal property classes, which are represented by 0.4%, and the residential are at 93%. So that's the breakout of the values. The next piece of information we need is the levy limit. So we take last year's levy limit, of uh, 41,862,408. We add two and a half percent to that, which is a million forty six five sixty. We add a certified growth, which has already been certified by the Department of Revenue at three hundred and ninety thousand three hundred and four. That gives us a levy limit of forty three million two ninety nine two seventy two. So in addition to that forty three million, we have to add on the debt. Um, we have the remaining balance on a debt exclusion of 806623 So for the purposes of this demonstration, our um, levy limit with debt exclusion is going to be 44105895 Parcel counts, we have 3,343 parcels. The next page is we're going to determine what the tax rate would be for the total value 
and the total levy, and then I break it out by residential <laughs> and by commercial, industrial, personal property. So the residential share is $3.4 billion. The commercial, industrial, personal property is $239 million, bringing our value to 3.7. If you take the levy of 44105 divided by the value of 3.7, we come up with an overall rate of $11.80. The current rate is $12.56. The first example is the levy um, of 44 million by 93% residential gives us the levy of 41 million for just the residential class divided by the residential value gives us the same rate of 1180. And then the third example is the commercial industrial personal property. We take the 6.4% of the 44 million uh, divided by the value of the commercial industrial personal property, we come up with the same 1180. So that's just like a checks and balance. So that's looking, if we had a uniform rate, that's what we're anticipating. <coughs> so the, we're allowed to shift a certain portion of the levy from the residential class to grant them relief and shift it to the commercial industrial personal property class. So our, um, we're, we're given a minimum residential factor, which is a factor that says the residential class has to pick up a certain percentage of the levy which is um, 96.57, it's the first minimum residential factor. So of that $44 million levy, the 93% that's residential brings it to 41 million. If we apply the minimum residential factor to that number, we reduce our $41 million residential levy to 39 million. So they're gonna pick up 39 million out of the 44, the residential class. If we divide it out by the residential value, come up with a tax rate of 1140. That 1140 is, has shifted some of, the, some of it into the commercial class. So our 1140 compared to 1180. Now the bottom, if we've used up 39 million of the levy, the residential share, we reduce the, the 44 million by 39 and the um, levy for commercial was 2.8 million. Now by shifting it's 4.2 million. If you divide that by the commercial industrial personal property value, we come up with a rate of $17.71. So in order for the residential class to get a break and go from 1180 to 1140, it's gonna cost the commercial um, 1180 to 1771. So it's a pretty extreme. Um, and I only did one example on the next page of um, what the impact of that would be. Um, you can go out, you know, different increments, different percentages, but I think this is, adequate for what we need. Um, the uniform rate, the property values are on the left, uh, the bottom value is a million dollars. Whether it's residential or commercial, it's still a million dollars. Uh, with a uniform rate, the taxes would be 11,800. If we break it out and do the relief to the residential, the taxes are gonna go from 11,800 to 11,400, but the, by saving $400. But the million dollar commercial property is gonna have a tax of 17,710, and it's gonna cost them an additional 5,900 to give the residential $400 break. So it's, it's pretty extreme. Um, any, I don't know if anyone has questions. But the last page is a, an example of what the impact would be. So our average value last year was a million one, and this year it's a million, a million 102, and this year it's a million 218. So the value went up, the tax rate went down, um, last year's average tax bill with the average value was 13,800. This year with the tax rate of 1180, if we go uniform, would be 14,300, which is an increase of $532, 3.84% increase. And then just, as a, uh, just to show you what the impact of the debt exclusion is, which it's only $800,000 now, it was a lot higher before. Um, the impact of that on the tax rate is 22 cents. So the average per the average value at million two, with that debt exclusion, that debt exclusion is costing them two hundred sixty eight dollars. Questions? So, it's, it makes sense, right? Yes. <laughs> Very nicely done, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Diane. Um, a question and a, and a comment. I'll make the comment first, which is in our. Um, I, I assume the board of assessors recommends it. The board of assessors recommends a uniform tax rate. I believe yep. advisor voted too, right? Yep, and we also put it in our budget message that that would be what we're doing. And just out of pure curiosity, the val overall valuation, how much has that changed from last year to this year? Is, is that? 
So our residential valuation. So single families, 10% okay. overall. Yeah. And condos are a little higher. I think they're like 12%. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of a loaded question because, you know, yeah, know. people break it down and say, oh, I, my, I only went up 8%. Right, right. Anyway, average. Yeah. 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 Other so we comments? Can, we can address any of the, if people want to come into the office, we can address any of the increases. So we can break it down for the, for the residents, you know. Mm -hmm. Instead of them speculating on. So <laughs> what we're saying is yes. anybody at home, if they have a question of their tax bill, mm -hmm. they can call the assessor's office. explain it. I will. And all that information is public and you'll be very clear about where and it A lot of it is on the website. And a lot of it's on the website. Thank you. Other comments? No. Uh, what's the motion you need from us? Okay, so we're going to continue the hearing. We usually continue it until we have the tax rate recap completely done. Um, if we can continue it to the next meeting, we should have everything in place by then. Then we'll know what the excess levy capacity is, which is a part of the form that we need the facility to sign. And okay. then the second thing is um, there's a provision for a small commercial exemption that we're supposed to vote on. I didn't even prepare that because the limitations on that that's shifting within the commercial class from the we get a list from the state and there's um, small businesses on it but in order to qualify there's only 14 communities in, in the entire state that have it because in order to qualify you have to be less than a million dollars less than 10 employees if you're in a strip mall and there's somebody that has more than 10 employees you're excluded so it would about 125 properties it would probably grant relief to 15 10 15 so it really wouldn't be worth a very small business. Yes. Yeah, so we just need a vote that we are not going to adopt the small commercial exemption either. Okay. And will you want that later? Of course. Yes. Yep. So there'll be two votes when we come back. Okay. Any okay. further questions? Okay. We'll move. Thank you, Mary. I should have introduced my board member. Lorraine Tarpey is here and um, Jennifer Mullen is our new finance director. I'm sure you've already met her. Yeah. Okay. okay. I yeah. move to continue the tax classification Second. hearing until Second. November 15th. Anybody in the public has any comments on this? Okay. Okay, moving on to the next. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm Thank you. Continue. Oh, Motion to continue, made and seconded. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Abstention. Mayor's motion Thank carried. You very much. Okay, next on the agenda. Um, wait just a minute. We are moving forward on that. We are um, discussion of whether the select board should file an open meeting law complaint regarding Russell Benetti email dated 1025. Uh, Mr. Benetti, um, we are going to open this, but do you have a comment? I, I would like this to be held in an executive session. Employee or uh, uh, committee members are considered special town employees. And according to the attorneys I've been talking to, I have the right to ask this to be in the executive session. If it is not, it's something potentially that could damage my reputation, and I intend to sue the town. Uh, we have our council here. You cannot have it in executive session tonight because you have not posted it for an executive session. You would have had to have done that 48 hours ahead of time. Right. And you would have also had to have given written notice mm -hmm. to Mr. Bernetti. So we cannot do an executive session tonight. If you want to defer the conversation to another night, for executive session, you could do that. Okay. So um, we had, we were aware of this. We, uh, the reason, um, you know, our attorney is here is because of this. Um, and if we were to go in open session, which we'll discuss, we could not discuss anything um, having to do with any personal issues at all. We could only discuss the um, the basis of the com of, of whatever there was a complaint, a potential complaint based upon things that are already in the public record. Is, is that accurate? It is, but you are also allowed under um, purpose number one um, for executive session, a charge or a complaint against a public official can be discussed in executive session, but only 
if the, the individual is given 48 hours written notice of right. that. So, um, but I'm, I'm talking about tonight. Tonight, you could have the conversation in open session exactly as you described, Mr. Chairman, keeping it just in the facts and nothing about reputation or character. I have not gotten any written notice of this. There has never been a precedent of this. I've spoken to many, many former selectmen, both this town and other towns. I would like to know when was this sort of action taken? I've been in the town 39 years. I've been a volunteer for over 30 of those. I've never seen a case where an individual was brought up in a public session. Has this been done before? And if so, when? Mm -hmm. What sort of action was taken against the Board of Selectmen back in February? When in an open, public, televised meeting, at the objection of two members of the board who were pointing out that it was an open meeting violation, this board discussed and voted on an item that was not on the agenda. If I, uh, yeah. Um, Board, do we, I, everybody's going to comment on that and we'll go around and um, just, so I, what we're deciding, I think, is whether or not, uh, I think we can discuss this as long as it's not personal, we could discuss that. I think that's correct. But let's discuss that before we go in and, and I'll just, everybody, does everybody want to speak to that? And Corey, your comment? So um, one of the first things that happened to me, Mr. Mr. Creighton, you probably remember, uh, my, uh, one of my first things as a, as a board member brand new to the board, uh, I, I copied the, this board on an email and town council at the time um, was very generous with me, that was Mr. Dorensis, about the correction. So my, um, my question for council here is, what is a, the, a typical, if there is an open meeting law uh, confusion, what is the typical remedy um, what was prescribed to me at the time was we put it on the next agenda, the board spoke about it, and uh, that was the remedy. Is, um, is that a, my understanding of the remedy of something like this? Is that correct? And that is typically it, yes. Okay, thank you. Paul? No, yeah, I'm the newest member of the board. I'm gonna... Diane? No, I, I would like to make a motion that we defer this um, at Kerr, uh, Mr. Benetti's recommendation in, into an executive session. That I would second that. Mm -hmm. Jean, I just want we to have a motion made and seconded that we defer. I just want to clarify, Mr. Senior, we asked you to provide written notice to Mr. Benetti on Friday. I, I can't hear. Did you provide that? So I uh, I called Mr. Benetti, spoke with him twice, and I sent him a copy of the agenda, noting what was on it. So. Okay. I'm fine with executive session. I just wanted to clarify for the record. Right. I, don't, don't get me wrong. I have no problem if you want to file an open meeting complaint against me. It's the matter We're, that well, it's being done. I've had an open meeting complaint filed against me once when I first started on the board, and it was filed uh, by me. Mr. So Benetti, Mr. Benetti if he wants us to defer, which I suspect we're going to defer, then we're not going to discuss it. Because Fine. if you want to discuss it, then we'll discuss it. But it's certainly not fair to the people at home to say, in, if we can't read this, you don't want us to read it in public, the emails. So we have a motion on the floor. Um, and unless you want to discuss it, we can discuss it. But I haven't mentioned about discussion. Okay. I'm talking about the matter. Well, you are, you, in you are engaging in discussion on, on the matter that we're deciding. And we're, we're voting on what you've requested. All right. We have a motion to defer that's made and seconded. Um, is there any discussion? Hearing no further discussion, um, all those in favor say, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Okay, moving on. Um, license and permits, the red line in extension of hours. I recuse myself on that one. Okay. <laughs> Is anybody from the red line here? Hello? 
Good evening. Oh. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Please uh, introduce yourself. So my name is Tony. I'm the general manager at the Red Lion Inn. And um, I would like to attend the meeting. And uh, we have a couple of requests for a New Year's Eve uh, to extend our uh, hours. Uh, so we have a wedding on uh, New Year's Eve, and uh, the wedding it's the wedding is going to be at the barn. So we would like to uh, extend until uh, midnight, until twelve fifteen a.m. And after um, after the wedding, they have a a party at the jazz club, uh, and we would like to extend hours until one a.m. Okay, um, questions and comments from the board? Yeah. Just, just for clarification, because in our packet, I think we had an old uh, notice, but this, a, is, oh, oh, this is a request for New Year's Eve, 1231-22, for the bar until 1215, the cave jazz club until 1 a.m., right? Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. I have July 10th, 2022. I'll, I'll move that we approve the extension so, of hours at the Red Lion okay. Inn for um, New Year's Eve in the barn until 12.15 and at the Cave Jazz Club till 1 a.m. Um, do we have a second? Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm still confused by the two different documents. Sorry, I, I didn't even know there was a second document. I just opened up the wrong oh. one, but I wrote it down. So do you mind if I just ask Tracy? Nope. Is this just the wrong one that got the packages? So if that could go back and forth when we have the, the right one. So they're looking for the bar until 1215, the key until 2. Do you have that just right there? So we can just read it. All right. And we just put them, we'll put this in the record. Just so we have it. There you go. Yeah. Red line near is these extension hours. Okay, we go 215. Uh one. One. 1 a.m. in one the cave. So this is cave. So the caves, is he still here? Yeah. The cave still 1 a.m., sir? Uh, yes. And bar until 2.15? 15. 12.15. 15. When and did that's, you... Uh, that's for one night only, right? Just for, uh, yes, for the New Year's Eve only, yes. Same thing with the Yeah, like I said, we have, we have about five different documents. Yeah. Yes. One yeah. when, did you, uh, when did you book this wedding? This wedding was booked last year. So this is a, one of the, what we call the COVID extensions. That's, that's correct, yes. Um, I second Diane's motion. We have a motion made and seconded to um, extend the hours. We just took that sheet away. <laughs> My apologies, it's 12.15. Uh, 12.15. So and the and uh, the 1 a.m. in the cave. And 1 a.m. to the cave. Uh, sorry, the cave until 2 uh, two o'clock, 2 a.m. Oh, sorry, yes, 2 a.m. the cave. 2 a.m. I amend my motion. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Tracy, you're clear about what this is. You've got that. Okay. All right. Is there any further discussion? So the votes, can we just redo the vote from scratch? Yep. Yep. Go ahead. Do you want me to withdraw the motion? Please. Yeah, I withdraw my original motion. I move that we approve an extension of hours for the Red Lion Inn barn for New Year's Eve, 1231-22 until 12.15 a.m. And for the Cave Jazz Club until 2 a.m. I have a motion. Do we have a second? I will second that. We have a motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Paul abstain. Okay. It, uh, three in favor, one abstention. Um, you know, may I make a, uh, a comment that in the future, now that we're past COVID, um, the reason in which the hours are restricted in that location is um, that was a condition that allowed that uh, barn, which is a, uh, an entertainment venue to be right. built and permit it so um and I, I i think there's some deference to the fact that it was new year's eve but i would caution you that when you're speaking to new um users or renters for your space 
not to tell them that they can expect to kind of come to before the select board and get these types of um, exemptions to the laws. The laws were put into place for a very good reason to protect the re residential neighborhood and a lot of concessions were given to this venue in order to do that and we would probably suggest that you should respect those in the future. Absolutely. So just kind of keep that in, 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 in mind, Tony. And Absolutely. thank you very much. Thank um, you. And by the way, we, we noticed that you're doing a nice job, you know, fixing up the roof and all that. So keep yeah. up the good work. Thank you so much for your support. Okay. okay, we have the Holiday Stroll Chamber of Commerce, 1210-1022. It's approval of, of the event and there's a one day entertainment license and we have our chief. Good evening, board. Um, this is, I've been working with um, Sean Cunning on this uh, last week and was with him today. I'll, I'll talk to him today. Uh, we're just looking for approval on the date, we're still ironing out the, um, the traffic details. Um, I, we didn't include a full packet uh, for this event for security reasons. Uh, we didn't want it in the public realm, but um, everything is well under control and um, this is a known commodity and uh, I recommend that uh, it be approved. Okay. Any discussion from the board? Well, I move that we. Wait, a minute. Gene. I mean, uh, Tracy. Is anybody? Look. No. Okay. Chair would entertain a motion. I move that we approve the holiday stroll event for December tenth between the hours of um, five and eight for setup at three thirty and take down after eight p.m. in the Cohasset Village. And you want to include the one day entertainment license? Sorry, I will do that next. Uh, well, we can include it in this motion. Uh, as well as the add-on uh, entertainment license for the um, same time period. Is that correct? Between 5 and 8 p.m. Yes. Thank you. We've had a motion uh, made and seconded. I'll approve the holiday stroll on 12-10-10-22, the event and a one-day entertainment license. Um, it's, it's been made. Seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries unanimously. I just want to say that we, I have a, a neighbor who emailed me in September to find out what date this was because they were making their like holiday weekend plans in New York and wanted to make sure they're around for this event. So. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Cohasset Sports Complex, one day liquor license, untold brewery for 12 10 22. 12 12 12 20, 22. In person. <laughs> did you bring any untold beer? I did not. I <laughs> uh, leave it in the parking <laughs> uh, Matt Elder, founder and president of Untold Brewing. Uh, we were asked by Cohasset, Cohasset Youth Lacrosse to uh, help out with a registration event they're holding at the sports center, uh, sports complex up there. Uh, it's to help promote registration for youth lacrosse. They're having a food truck and asked us if we would provide beer for the event. Uh, there's a little kind of area where we'll set up next to the field. So I believe there'll be games and they kind of are trying to make it a stuff fun day for families uh, around lacrosse. Chief Quigley. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, if, if um, the board doesn't detain this, I'd recommend that there be a police detail present for this. It's sort of in a remote location and um, it's not somewhere that we go by a lot. So it's, um, and I, to, to the best of my knowledge, this is the first time this has occurred. What do you have a comment on a police detail? I do that the nature of this event is a little different than other ones, and that it is very family oriented. Um, we, we do a lot of events like pop ups like this, and we don't usually see any issues at all with this kind of like more family oriented. It's you know usually one beer a person type of thing. I, I will say that we do police details, and always happy to do them. This kind of smaller event. Unfortunately, the cost kind of is prohibitive to us kind of, I don't know, making, <laughs> making the, the revenue surpass the, the cost of the actual event after labor and everything. So it's just, 
it does complicate things for us. And again, it's, it's we're happy to, you know, defer obviously to you um, on what needs to be done, um, but we'd have to circle back with the coordinators because then it, it does become kind of just a, a cost for us rather than that. How many people do you expect? I was told about 150 people. Um, 150 to 200 is on the application. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully half those people want to purchase a beer at the event. Um, you know, we, we kind of wanted to do it to help out the event and make it like fun for everybody um, or fun for the adults. But the, the so are you, detail does um, add a cost to us. I forget what the. So you're, you're, you're there and you keep the proceeds? Or... Correct. Correct. Okay. Chief? Uh, 200 people look at being served. I'd recommend the detail. Yeah. Thoughts, Corey? Um, sounds like a great event. Um, I am uh, hesitant to go against Chief's recommendations. Of Anything went wrong, um, you know, if there's any confusion whatsoever, so we always err on the side of caution. So I would um, uh, not be willing to approve this without following the recommendation of this detail. Other comments from the board? I'd have to agree with my colleague. I just don't want to go against the chief what his recommendations are. It sounds like a nice event, and I, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I am. I, I, I am going to probably say something I shouldn't say in public at a public meeting, but um, nobody likes beer gardens more than I do. <laughs> um, however, I, 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 I'm a little hesitant where this is a youth sports um, registration event. Um, I, I just think, you know, I remember the day when you couldn't even get a beer at a, at a college um, sporting mm -hmm. event, so I'm <laughs> uncomfortable with it, but I, you know, I, I would be willing if, if, if the board is willing to support it, but obviously with the with, um, chief's recommendation for a police detail, but I just wanted to kind of register my reluctance. We spend so much time and energy on having and promoting non-alcoholic and, and drug-free um, events, and for, for a youth program, it, it leaves me a bit unsettled, but. Jane, do you have comments? Um, I think I'm sort of along the lines of Diane. I was just regaling some of my colleagues with Massachusetts's blue laws and the Puritan origins of a um, economic <laughs> regulation. Uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, I I do appreciate all that Safe Harbor and you know those who support it, including members of the select board, have done to try to encourage um, safe drinking and not mix youth and drinking as much as possible. Um, I also appreciate the parents are relatively responsible in this town and hopefully also know the lines. And so I would be willing to support it, but with the police team. Uh, my personal opinion is I would support it with a police detail, but I would really have to echo um, part of Diane's sentiment, you know, we are in a, a society where we're very concerned of the destructive effects of alcohol and, and drugs upon kids, which we all know of that and Cohasa is not immune from that. And there's kind of a disturbing tendency that every time you have a fun event, it has to have alcohol with it. Um, and I personally find that disturbing um, or of concern. That being said, um, I do think that they're meeting all the requirements and people obviously you know, want to do this. And as long as there's a police detail, I'd be in favor of that. So is there any other discussions? So just on the procedure here, because the event is November 14th, um, normally if we were to ask the applicant to come back again with the police detail, we wouldn't be able to do that because we have a meeting. So would it be appropriate for us to approve the license with contingent, the contingent. contingent on the police detail? Yeah. Okay. Then I would move that we approve the Monday liquor license for, I've lost my tab because it's 2022. <laughs> um, the Matt Elder for Untold Blue, Brewing for the last giving event on November 12, 2022, between the hours of 1.30 and 4.30 p.m. at the Classic Sports Complex. Um, what was the terminology you just used, Mr. Chair? Contingent, contingent upon, upon police um, detail. Yeah, the uh, the hiring of a police detail. Okay. Second it. We have a motion made and seconded, and it's just been read. <laughs> Mr. Quigley, oh, do you have oh. your hand up for this? I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to do the motion. Just um, if this passes, could you uh, 
have the gentleman just contact the uh, police station and order that detail. Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Right. Yeah, his license is contingent. Okay. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extension. Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Quigley, when do you need to know by? Um, we just need to know who, uh, you know, who's uh, the billing information and, um, you know, the particulars. So um, whoever's, we need someone to actually physically order the detail, uh, make the call to the station. So we just need a point person, really. But, um, you know, th this week is fine anytime. We'll have the time later. Okay. Yeah, we'll do it. Good. All right. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Bud. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Okay, moving on. Um, Alternative Energy Committee update. Tracy. Oh, there she is. It was a really so, fast switch that was drawing. Yeah. <laughs> She's ready. She's quickly She's ready to go. All right. <laughs> Tanya. Go. Hello, everybody. If I could uh, have the screen share enabled, I'll quickly give you our quarterly update. This is our fourth quarter update for 2022. And we're going to focus on um, an update on the initiatives that you asked us to pursue at the beginning of the year and let you know where we are in some of um, hopefully votes coming down the pike for you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and here we go. All right, thank you for having us as always. We're gonna touch upon the status of solar energy arrays, talk about the electric school bus demonstration project. None of this should be new. Again, it's an update electric vehicle charging stations, the Alternative Energy Committee does have a recommendation on charging for the charging stations and microgrid update, uh, mainly to talk about what, what you need to think about or what we'd like you to think about for 2023 and what direction we should go uh, there. But we continue to find opportunities. We have our full team. Thank you for the political appointments. Um, they're very passionate people. This is us in front of the solar panels. Um, it's just, it's a great team, Steve Winter, Josh Daunton, Pat Gooding, Michael Schmidt, Debbie Cook, and Chris Olufsen is our newest member, and they each have taken on uh, topics that they're championing. Um, so our topics are solar energy array turned five, uh, the electric school bus demonstration coming down the road, see what I did there, electric vehicle charging fees, and the microgrid project, um, and again, it's an update. So landfill celebrated its fifth year of operation, turn five, and we're very happy about it. And it has saved the town $300,000. Uh, we are averaging around 55,000 to 60,000 a year in savings. And this winter, um, those savings are gonna basically double on a monthly basis because of what just happened with the electricity rates. They're gonna be hugely expensive. So um, we continue to have a fixed price with that landfill at 8.8 .8 cents. The um, credit we're gonna receive is gonna be around 42 cents for every kilowatt hour that's produced. And that's gonna create probably close to $60,000 for the winter months. So it is doing its job and we'd like to do more of that. So happy fifth birthday to our solar energy array. Um, what else can we do? Well, the town library is replacing their roofs. Uh, the key problem we've had is roofs. They're just a lot of our buildings have roofs that are too old or too small. But the library is replacing their roof. We asked for an indicative bid. We could get um, almost 100 kilowatt system on the roof, and we could save between seven to fourteen thousand dollars per year, possibly more at uh, the winter rates that we're going to see this year. So we could be on the higher end of that if we wanted to pursue that. Um, we'd have to just think about, do we go forward with a chapter 30B procurement um, or do we go through power options, which is a municipal aggregator and because they're doing the municipal aggregation and procurement, we would not need to do a chapter 30B procurement. Um, you could do that without town approval at town meeting about leasing the roofs, but that's always a good idea to go to the town meeting anyway. So this is something you don't have to decide this now, but it's just an opportunity as, the, as roofs get replaced, we should be thinking about putting solar on the roofs. And we've talked to you about the third party opportunity at Stop and Shop. Um, we have gotten an, a letter of intent from the town. Thank you. We are waiting for town council to review the credit purchase agreement. 
This is not as lucrative. It's five times the size of the library and has around the same projected savings, but it could be guaranteed savings if that's what we wanted to do. So, you know, there are still ways we can keep saving money. Um, we just need some guidance direction on how to proceed with that. But our job is to bring you these opportunities. We are continuing to move this one forward because it's an easy one and it's gonna get built. The problem is we are getting caught in the queue. So National Grid is in the midst of a cluster study tied to the substation. That's our feeder, um, where our feeder line comes from and everything is getting bogged down. And so I think we told you that um, one of the projects had gone into the queue and got a $500,000 price tag to connect to National Grid system, um, which is crazy numbers. It's just crazy numbers. They have backed off of that verbally, but we still have interconnection challenges. But all of that said, if, if you don't try to get the project going and put it in the queue and it's at no cost to the town, we're not gonna get any of the savings. So we may as well try um, and be there ready to go. And some of these projects might squeak by. So that's on the solar. Um, I, we have saved a lot no. of money and there's more <clears throat> that we can save. Diane? Yes. Yep. Diane. Sorry, Diane, I just have a question on the, um, on the uh, previous slot. Yes, the stop and shop proposal. Why would that be beneficial to the town on if it's on private property? So the town can purchase electricity from a third party. Got it. Without going through a um, 30 degree procurement because the town won't be leasing the roofs. And basically this could be structured as a deal where either the town buys the solar power at a price and then the town would get a credit from National Grid on the bill. And as long as the credit is bigger than the price we're paying, we make money, we save money. So that's what we're doing now with the old landfill. We're buying the electricity from the old landfill at 8.8 .8 cents. Uh, we're getting a credit from National Grid starting today at 40 cents a kilowatt hour for every kilowatt hour produced. And that means that we are saving money because we're buying electricity at a lower rate. For a third party site, it's the same thing. It's just, it's not our land, it's a, another site. But because somebody else is getting a lease payment to put the solar panels on their roof, um, we don't make as much money. We don't save as much money. And um, the other thing is because it's on a third party site, the credit that comes from National Grid is lower than if it's on a town site. And that's just based on the Massachusetts state rules. So okay. we still would have net savings and it could be guaranteed on the stop and shop roofs, and that's why we would do it. Tanya, we have a question. So how's that broken now, Tanya? What's in it for the owner of the buildings? Um, I don't know. We have an offer from Palmer Capital to sell us a credit at a guaranteed percentage savings rate. So we'd have locked in savings guaranteed no matter what happens to the credit, if it goes up or down. Um, we don't have any insight into the rest of the arrangements. We don't know what they're paying for solar. We don't know what they're getting for the SREC. We don't know what they're paying their contractors and we don't know what they're paying the, um, the building owner. Corey. Tony, so is there another, since it sounds like, as we've talked about before, like Palm, we're, per, we're basically Palmer Capital is operating as a power plant for us in this case, right? We're buying, the mechanism is a little more back and forth, but we're buying power from them. Are there other solar arrays, other third party sites that we can do the same thing with? How is this more beneficial than if we, you know, went to the marketplace for something similar, if that's even a um, Yes, so the answer is we could purchase uh, just either the credits directly, which is uh, an option that Palmer Capital has given us, and we could purchase the credits directly from anybody. Um, Palmer Capital, assuming they can connect to the national grid system says they're going to put these solar panels on no matter what and that they can find a market to sell them to other municipalities or other business owners and they would get that credit so it's just a question of do we want the credit for a lower price to have net savings but there's there is a market for buying it from others and it's this is a little bit more favorable than what we could get from others we know that based on the bids that we received. 
Thank you. Because remember, this was part of the bidding process we went through in 2020. Okay. Go ahead, Tanya. Okay. But great questions. Um, electric school bus demonstration project. Tomorrow night, I believe the school committee is going to vote on whether or not to proceed with it. Um, once they vote, assuming or hoping that they move forward with this project, which we think is a no brainer, um, it would then come to you and capital budget for approval, probably also the advisory committee, we're lining up meetings. Um, but this is an uh, opportunity we've talked about before and Alex has offered us an opportunity to lease an electric school bus, which normally costs three times the amount of a diesel bus to basically lease it for the same price as or less than what we're paying for diesel buses. Um, we've told you about this opportunity before. We had to go out to an RFP to make sure it was competitive. And by far, it was the best opportunity in price. And, and um, you know, they're very qualified. They have 1,500 electric buses leased or managed. Um, they've offered the option to own one electric school bus, or either own or lease, or lease to own to the town. It's priced to be competitive. I'll show you on the next screen. Uh, they've included all maintenance and fuel costs are included in the lease. Um, plus, they manage the charging times, and they basically would manage the bus charging around the times when the school needs the bus to make sure the bus is fully charged when it needs it, but to be able to potentially sell as a demand resource into the grid, which is why it's a demonstration project. Um, there's around a 12-month lead time, so we are now past our hopefully September date, but we still have a time frame where we need to get in front of more than a billion dollars of money that's going into the electric school bus market thanks to the EPA grants, which were just awarded two weeks ago. So um, school committee is reviewing. Hopefully they'll vote to proceed. If they do, this will come back before you for a vote to approve. And we just wanted to get this in front of you now so you had all the information. This is what the offer is from NLX. Um, we could just do a five-year lease at an annual price of 25,000, a seven-year lease at 25,300, uh, we could do a lease to own, which is more expensive for either five or seven years. And uh, right now, given what's budgeted or what is being looked at as being budgeted for the diesel buses um, this year and next year, this is a savings of potentially $3,000 a year because it includes the maintenance and it includes the cost. Um, so they've done a very good job really getting the price down. So it's a no brainer for us in our minds. It's a lower cost than leasing a diesel bus, even though the electric school buses normally cost, um, you know, two to three times more. And it gives us the opportunity to test it out, gather information, understand what the maintenance costs are, understand what the fuel costs are, understand what the challenges are, understand if there's a range issue. So down the road, no pun intended, the state is definitely going to be pushing electric school buses. The federal government is giving out $5 billion in subsidies for school buses through the EPA that was granted through the infrastructure bill. So um, as Massachusetts goes net zero, everybody is going to be required at some point before 2040 to be 100% electric school buses. This gives us an opportunity <laughs> to get the information in advance at a cost less than leasing a diesel bus. Um, so it's a great opportunity. The school staff is weighing the options and they'll be talking to the school committee tomorrow as part of our presentation on how they would see this fitting in. And um, that's what that opportunity is. So it's a great price and hopefully they will approve it and take it forward. But we just wanted to give you the details so that you would be ready to vote if they proceed. Honey, is the cost of fuel included regardless of how much we use the bus? Yes. Oh, it's amazing. Okay, thank you. Somebody negotiated really hard on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody we know? You might. It's a small town. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Go ahead, Tanya. Okay, great. All right, um, charging stations. This has been an issue we've kept coming to you about, and um, we told you we thought it was time in July to start looking at charging for the charging. 
Um, so the town has 16 active ports. Two of them require replacement. It turns out these are like computers and they have around the same life as a computer and they are expensive to replace. That is the bad news. The good news is we still have 16 active ports and people are using them. Um, they're using them a lot, actually. Um, the, the problem is, especially now with the higher electricity prices, the cost to the town is gonna be uh, way, way in our minds, way too high and our minds being the committee's minds. And so our recommendation is that we do start charging. Um, just as an example, last month alone, there were around 90 unique users, uh, not town cars, and the total cost of electricity, including town cars, uh, but most of those are gonna be the unique <coughs> users, third parties was $1,700. So it's time we think to, um, Put in some charging and also to disincentivize bad behavior where people are just sitting there once they're fully tapped out um and and we do we think that this winter is going to be very expensive so we recommend even though it's not the full freight and obviously you can change that the um committee looked at what other charge point charging stations were charging at the time it was around 20 cents per kilowatt hour we looked at what the town's cost was. On average, when you're not in the middle of these crazy winter prices, it is around 20 cents per kilowatt hour. And so we recommended charging a base price of 20 cents per kilowatt hour to, to start to cover the costs, plus an additional amount to cover the administrative costs. So it turns out we have to pay charge point if we're gonna charge people. Um, we took that vote September 8th. It was approved with one abstention because that member frequently uses, they are one of those 100 unique users who uses a charging station. So that person abstained. Um, but we thought that that 20 cents per kilowatt hour, even though it's now going to be half of what our winter rates is, was good to start recovering costs. It was good to be consistent with where the market was. And we want to see if that um, kills demand. We just don't know. Right now we're giving it away for free, the electricity for free. Um, if we start charging, are people gonna stop charging? In which case we'd be stuck paying a fee to charge point to allow us to charge, but having no market. So we wanted to at least start charging something to help recover and defray the costs, as well as to test out what the elasticity of demand is. So that's our recommendation on this one. Are there any questions? Uh, Lori, Chris, uh, does anyone know how much are, are charge points administrative costs? Off the top of my head, no. Okay. But there, do you is, have any there, is, sense? there is a cost. I know that, yeah, yeah. Well, I just, if we're doing 20 and yeah. just so some sort of charge of final cost will be there. Well, we can bring that back. Tanya, do you, you must know what the cost charge point. No, so when we took this vote, we did not, we knew there was a cost, but we did not know what the cost was. So our vote was that it be the 20 cents plus whatever additional amount is needed to cover the administrative cost. Do you know um, what our cost per kilowatt is to, to supply the electricity? So the average cost per kilowatt as of yesterday was around 20 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, as of today, it's twice that. So the electricity cost alone, right? We're, we're starting to cover it, but we're still not fully covering it with this recommendation. Um, however, we did want to make sure we do cover whatever charge points administrative costs are, which well, we don't know what. Michelle was looking into that, and I have not heard back from her what those are. Okay, Paul. So you said we're headed up to around the 40 cent range. Yeah, you know, when we took the vote in September. Um, I mean, now it's up around 40, right? It's now at 40, yes. Uh, we, we have a, we, we our contract, our, our energy contract spike like that. We have a, we have a contract for electricity that stays stable. We're in a three-year contract. So you want to cover administrative costs. You want to cover administrative 20 cents, I think you're giving it away still. So that's just my thought. Um, well, but hold on, are we, Chris? Because if we have a fixed price contract, I can't imagine it's at 40 cents. No, no, it's not. I, I, I'm fairly. I'm, I, I don't have that off the time I had either, Tanya. But we, we have, we have, we did, we, we have a consortium with multiple communities through the schools, 
and we do that for natural gas and we do that for uh, for electricity and we're, we're in that contract right now i don't think it's due for renewal until sometime next year i think that's a, a fact that we really need to understand because i don't imagine that if well let's find out what the facts are first so Okay, go ahead, Tom. Sorry, Any other quick comment? No, I'm just sorry, a quick Diane. question in that, like, do, do we actually need to take action on that, or is that something that can just take place internally in terms of setting? setting oh, no, no, price? the board has to, set have to take a vote. Yeah, I prefer the board take a vote. Yes. Well, we, there, we could kind of say, number one, do we think there sh we should start charging? We could yes. take a position yes. on that, yeah. and then we could figure out what it's going to be later. My sense from that. The nodding is yes. an emotion that we would. Uh, I move that we, I move yeah. that we uh, adopt the AC recommendation to set a base price of 20 kilowatt hours, uh, plus an, the additional amount to recover charge point administration costs as the rate for the town EV chargers. Second. Do we have a made and second? Do we have discussion? Um, I do, because we don't have the actual cost of what we're paying. I mean, I would say if you're up around, in, again, you say we're not paying the 40, I would split it down the middle of, say, 30, because you're covering your winter and your summer rates, but you said we're paying less, so we don't have a handle on that. I, I, I don't know off the top of my head, Paul, but I can find out. But, I mean, I still think 20 is a giveaway. If you can split it, send it across the board at 30. Well, my your summer and your winter. one suggestion would be to say we approve, it in, we approve it in concept and set the rate when we get the facts. We can change the rate. No, I, I agree with you. We can yeah. we can change this whenever we want. Yeah. Well, if if well, if you re withdraw and resubmit, <coughs> why? Because you're 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 locking in twenty. No, it would just come to the board. We can change it with another motion. You know, the next meeting, we just vote it later on. But so, like, if we do find that we are way upside down, I think what Tony, if I understand you correctly. We want to see what this does to the, the whole thing to see how much we're spending. If this, if we're, we end up in the money in this structure, we're good. If we, to Paul's point, if we end up out of the money, then we obviously have to take action. So I would recommend that we revisit this, you know, in 60 days or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Tanya, we yes. don't commit to a long term on this price. No, you don't no, have okay. to at all. I mean, you change it every month. Um, you don't have to. Well, I think we're fine long then. term. I think, I think, I think we just thought you want to start charging as soon as possible. All right. Yes. I think we're fine month to month, just as long as we we have a motion made and seconded to um, charge 20 cents a kilowatt hour plus charge points administrative costs. Do you want to do a amendment? Do you want to do an official amendment or do you want to let it apply? To, I'd like to see it to, until we find out the guaranteed rate. If not, we reserve the right to raise that, right? Yes. We do. That's right. So that's uh, that, that's the amendment. So we reserve the right to raise that rate. Absolutely. Yeah, that's built in at any time. Yeah. Um, we have an amendment to the. Um, we have amendment to the. <laughs> amend my motion to say, and the, uh, the board reserves the right with, to withdraw the motion and then redo it. Yes, we'll do. Uh, I move that we follow the AAC recommendation regarding charging a base price of twenty cents per kilowatt hour plus. Any additional administration costs from charge point um, for the town town's EV chargers, uh, with the explicit statement that the select board reserves the right to adjust those fees, increase them as necessary. Second. second. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Motion carries unanimously. Um, all right. Great. Yeah. I think this is good, and we'll track the. The usage and see how this impacts, Good. if at all, the users and the usage. Um, and we'll come back to you so that you know if we're undershooting or overshooting with the information that you've asked for tonight. Thank you, Tanya. Um, Tanya, nice what comment. help do you need from us to get ChargePoint up and going in terms of figuring out um, any help you need from the select board to lock that down? Yeah, I, I mean, I defer to Chris Senior on this, but I think this is a town staff exercise to, and okay. Michelle has been coordinating with ChargePoint on this. Okay, so Chris will have Michelle yep. coordinate. Okay, It'd great. Be like 50 cents in the end if it's right. somebody. Yeah, just this, right. we'll find out. Okay. All set, Tanya. All set on this. So last thing is the microgrid. 
Um, as you may already know, we did not win the FEMA BRIC grant. Um, however, with the Inflation Reduction Act, every single component of the microgrid receives a subsidy under the Inflation Reduction Act. And that subsidy is potentially 30%. So whereas the FEMA BRIC grant was 75%, there's at least 30%, possibly more, on some of the component parts of a microgrid. Um, we just want to let you be aware of that. I think the key part of this section is to say you wanted us to look at how we could improve power supply to the town through this process. We looked at a number of different options. The process of talking to National Grid has been very positive. It kept us in front of National Grid. Hopefully you can see this, but this is our tree trimming schedule of National Grid. And you may notice that the vast majority of the town is orange and that was in 2022. So for those of you who saw the bucket trucks trimming trees, um, I'd like to say I wish that would have happened without our discussions and maybe it would have, but I suspect the fact that we were working closely with National Grid and pointing out these problems um, may have motivated a lot of that tree trimming. And we're, we were very happy to see those bucket trucks because the trees needed to be trimmed. Um, they're still not trimmed at the level that would need to be done as we had proposed as part of the FEMA BRIC grant proposal. Um, but I think we are in a better place and we've learned more about our system. So anything that's in green on this map is bare tree wire. And that includes everything that runs down Sawyer Street, everything North Main Street. In fact, all of the streets that have the worst reliability in town are bare wire. And that's the existing um, metal wire. The tree wire, as you can see, is sheathed. It's protected. A tree branch touches it. Nothing happens. Squirrel jumps on it. Nothing happens. So part of our problem is the fact that we have a very old system. Um, and a lot of the proposal for the microgrid was replacing uh, that downtown core area with tree wire versus the existing air wire, which is in this map in green. Um, so because of the Inflation Reduction Act, pen being handed to Joe Manchin, um, nearly every aspect of that microgrid is now covered. And one of the things that you should be aware of is it used to be all tax credits for wind and solar. It's now not just wind and solar, the um, bill is technology agnostic. That Inflation Reduction Act is actually an energy an, an energy policy act in disguise. Um, it, it expands beyond wind and solar. It, it's technology agnostic. And perhaps most importantly, it gives a direct payment directly to municipalities. So previously, the incentives were tax credits. You had to work with a developer like Palmer Capital or Select who had tax appetite to realize those credits. Now, a municipality could invest in solar alone and receive a 30% um, check payment from the federal government. Um, so this is like a grant. It just happens to be a law. And there are now direct payments could go to municipalities that want to do the investment directly. Um, and, and as we said, the universe of potential clean energy options has expanded to include microgrid equipment as well as interconnection costs uh, and, and goes beyond wind and solar to include batteries on a standalone basis as well. So there's still opportunity. The microgrid would not be as cost effective as if we got a 75% subsidy from a fee member grant. Um, it would be more in the 15 to $25 million range. Uh, we have looked at all of these. We've discussed with you these other options. We've talked about what National Grid could do, should do, what we can do with National Grid to encourage them to do it. And I guess the question now is, where do you want us to go with this? Um, and, and, and especially on the municipalization, right? I think we do not have to buy the, tr the distribution system to become a municipal utility. We could be a municipality, municipal light plant that owns solar and batteries and other types of generation if we wanted to. Um, but that's our question, which is where, what, what's your guidance on that? You don't have to give it to us now, but we'd like to know what you'd like us to do for 2023. We feel like we've done our job on this one. We've pulled together the information. Why do we have a problem? What can we do about it? What would it cost? 
We've tried to get some money. We now have some money that could come in through the federal legislation. Um, but we'd be looking for guidance from you. Again, longer discussion than we have tonight, but just wanted to put that on your radar. And, um, and the other items we've already talked about. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, we have Jean and then Diane. Hey, Tanya, thank you um, for the presentation. Extremely educational as usual. Um, under the new federal subsidies that are out there, is there any money to underground wires from a resiliency standpoint? And I'm not just talking about water, but storms. You know, we obviously have huge energy resiliency issues here within Cohasset, notwithstanding national grids tree trimming, which I entirely attribute to you and the AEC, but thanks national grid. Um, so I'm wondering, are there, is there any federal money we should be focused on as it relates to underground wires, particularly if we're starting to look at roads and pave roads? Um, I know underground wires are so expensive, but if we could at least begin making some headway in strategic ways, I'm curious as to your thoughts there. Yep, and so the money that we discovered for undergrounding would, what, what an obvious place for that would come from the FEMA brick grants. And they have, you know, we came in with a microgrid versus just a section of road that should be underground. Um, they do have grant money for that under the resiliency and our hazard mitigation plan identifies undergrounding or looking at undergrounding as part of the problem. Um, part of the solution it, you know the problem is we're just a wealthy community and and it's hard to understand how well off we are I think we all realize how well off we are and we're very thankful for that but just to put it in the perspective of the electric school buses the vast majority of the money of the 500 million that was just awarded by the EPA went to impoverished communities that are driving more than 10 school buses that they own that are more than 10 years old, right? We, we're just, we're, we're, it's hard for us to claim we need the money to put something underground no matter how bad it is. When there are obviously gonna be environmental justice communities, impoverished communities, communities that are in the Appalachians getting um, adversely impacted because of, it, they're called energy communities under the Inflation Reduction Act. So there is money it's hard for us to go after it. And if we are, it's going to be around six to eight million dollars a mile. Mile? A mile. Mile. A mile. Diane? Um, no, I look forward to continuing the bigger picture conversation about direction and what we should be focused on next year. I wonder, just an update, Chris, on the resiliency coordinator position, whether that's something that would be working with AEC and you know what the timeline might be on that person kind of getting up these <laughs> projects? Uh, we actually have two. So we have the sustainability share. With right. Paint right. Paint. It was going to be, I think, working mostly. That's going to be more there. Now. Okay. Um, and I, um, again, Michelle, I talked about the, in the last 48 hours. I, I, I believe they were hiring someone finally, so that's great. Um, and, I, and I know uh, there's an interview scheduled pending for the, res the residency person. So I think that's pending, too. So. Um, well, you know, in other words, this conversation, what, what Tanya is asking from us is where do we want to go with this conversation? And I think that's an important one to have sooner rather than later. Although I think we should make sure that um, some of these staffing positions are ready to on. Now, this is our, our, our way of evaluating. That's why we're hiring them. Yep. So I think it's very pertinent that we know when they're going to be on board because we're going to be looking for that expertise to address these types of problems. All right. So on the next steps, and, and I just want to put a pin in everyone's mind, you know, one thing that's been on my mind is the vision of at some point in the future, having a, a municipal light plant board, like we have the sewer or the water boards, because what I'm thinking is we're saving all this money, right? And right now it's, I don't want to say it's disappearing, but it's kind of going to the general fund. All right. And we kind of don't know where it goes. It's kind of there. I mean, some of it goes to the schools. I think I think there's some, Tanya, there's some kind of split between who takes the power for the landfill. Am I correct on that? Some of it goes to the schools. So, but if we're going to be saving all this money, 
but we know we have expenses, we do account for that somehow. We need to account and be sure that we're not just, you know, money's not just going to the general fund and disappearing. And I think that establishing either a revolving revolving fund or a, uh, you know, a, it, its own separate thing, just like we have for water and sewer, would make a lot of sense here. I know it's kind of complicated, but if we want to do things more aggressively, it also gives us a funding mechanism. It gives us a way to, if we want to underground, you know, we have, you know, we have a funding mechanism that we can use for that if it's, you know, it's on end So just pin in that. Right. Other comments from the board? Jane? I, I would be open to something along the lines of what you're suggesting, Corey. I think that the first step with that, from my perspective, is figure out legally how we get that up and going. I think the funding will come. I think it's more a question of how to push that out uh, because that could take a lot of money, a lot of upfront capital. So? Well, I'm hoping like even legal for, like, the... fees and the state yeah. regulatory process. I mean, okay. anytime you go through those sort of things, it just takes but a while. If we're going to be saving, if we're going to put like solar panels on the library, we're going to be saving all this money. Like some, some. Sorry, Chris. Well, again, I, I don't want to minimize the savings. That's they're great. But what Tanya was selling was seven or seven or fourteen thousand dollars a year, which is something, right? Yeah, right. But it's not enough to fund some major program. Mm -hmm. And the same thing we're saving on the sure. landfill is great too. But it's about forty thousand dollars a year. I, again, I'm not minimizing that. It's great, but it's not enough to fund a major initiative. It's just, I, I guess it's not that I'm thinking also about like maintenance, though. I mean, you know, you've got inverters, you've got panels, you've got. I, I'm thinking about the. Well, we don't own any of it. So. Right, but if we do start owning, I guess that's to your point, Gene, about if we start having capital needs. Okay. Yeah, if we, if we own it, we should be putting. Uh, I don't think know. If you're going to set up with something like that. It's extraordinarily capital expensive, and you, it's, a, it's a major thing. There's something we might want to consider. We're going to start going down the line of, of being of the town going into the electricity business um, and harvesting various government subsidies and all that. It is it is something that is a big big production and will require staffing and all that. But anyway, I think we know that that's something that we, you know, is you know one of the potential things for the future. Um, any other comments, Tanya? Um, I, I would just say, you know, again, they, it adds up. The opportunities add up. And I think we're going to, the solar energy array in 12 months is going to save the town $100,000. Uh, there, even if we don't own the assets, right, but we have the savings from multiple assets, somebody needs to oversee it. And, and examples of the folks we're bringing on board, sustainability, maybe other, that could be funded from the savings. So being able to account for it properly, I think, is something we should definitely be thinking about um, because we're just at the beginning. They're, they're, we're in a money machine right now. Even though we are a wealthy community, we still have a lot of opportunity and incentives to be able to grab. And if we don't pick it up off the street, somebody else is going to. So I think whatever structure we need to do to be able to move forward and operationalize and implement um, to realize these savings for the town, that, that's what we should be thinking about. And correct me if I'm wrong, and we've had previous discussions, but this is all dependent upon various, um, basically federal funding coming in to, to cover all this through grants and, and, and various things like that. And so when well, you right, say it right doesn't now, that's cost what we're down for? anything, it's because the state or the feds are paying for it? That's what we're focused on, because we like to come to you with no-brainers. But um, we are not far away from the state starting to put out unfunded mandates, right? The state, Massachusetts, is looking to go net zero by 2040. And they're looking to use the municipalities to do that, among others. So there will be laws, potentially unfunded mandates. They're trying to come out with the carrot first. But I think we need to be prepared for that. So yes, we are going after the money, the, the state and the federal funding because we wanna to try to make it as green in both ways as possible from a money point of view, as well as from an environmental point of view. But we uh, can definitely foresee unfunded mandates coming from the state as the state moves to go net zero. So we'll, we're looking to get money in, but protect ourselves from various coercive, you know, mandates, unfunded mandates, which will cost us. Just think that everybody in town should be aware of that's the whole picture we're looking. At. That is a strategy that we are okay. working on as well. Other comments from the select board? None. 
Tanya, thank you, as always. We are more knowledgeable after listening to you. <laughs> well, thank you, Jack. And I always enjoy our conversations. And um, hopefully, the school committee will vote to proceed with the electric school bus demonstration project. And you'll be able to get it on your agenda as soon as possible to approve it. Um, just time is of the essence on some of these opportunities. So thank you, everybody. Appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you. Now, moving, moving on, we. We have the um, sidewalk charge discussion. Has everybody read the uh, the latest charge? And are there any comments on it? Um, Sorry, I think, or or this so, is your work, right? Yeah. So uh, Gene had some great edits, which I yes. incorporated. There were three spots, I think, if I recall, that we we wanted to get board feedback on. Uh, the first is the number of select board representatives. Um, I had originally drafted it as one, Gene recommended two. Uh, and the question I guess we have for the board, if this is right, um, is basically, you know, if there's if there's two people that really want to be on this committee, um, you know, we can certainly do that. Um, I was, I think in my in original drafting, going back and forth in my head, leaning towards the giving another seat to a resident. You know, sometimes if you have two select board members, it's scheduled to be a challenge. But, I'm certainly, you know, I think if there's two of us that really want to be on this, I don't include myself in, the, in one of those groups, <laughs> then, um, you know, we can certainly have two. That's the first question. Okay, um, but let's, go ahead. why don't we first say if, if we're going to pass this charge? Well, sure, yeah, but so the charge, there were just two parts where I'd like to uh, get oh, okay. feedback on what the charge should say, okay. right? I think they're just those. So one is the number of select board representatives, is that correct? Uh, the second one is on the um, kind of the timeline. Um, you know, the question is, you know, how many times do we want the committee to, to report to us and when do we want them to be kind of wrapped up? <laughs> kind of got a, you know, we all want this to get done real fast, but um, we kind of don't control how fast it happens. So some thoughts on um, how do we put a deadline on it, but without kind of shortening the deadline so far, so close that nothing can get done. Um, I think that we're struggling with that as, as well. Is that kind of the two main things, Gene? Is there something else that I'm missing? Um, I think those are two things. I have two other things, but on the- Let's get it out on the table. On the, fir on the first two things, I know Paul is interested. So yeah. my thought is if Paul is interested, but you're interested, we'll just do both. Oh, mm -hmm. I agree, yeah. But if you're not interested in just Paul is and I'm fine with like I'm just trying to make room for both of you guys if you're interested if you want it I have no desire Mr. Grady can we draft you <laughs> yeah Mr. Grady's on so, there so do, do you, you want, want to be on it no I, I think if oh, one okay. is better for okay. the committee frankly okay yes it okay. is absolutely That's fine. I'm yeah. fine. I was just trying to okay make room for both of you guys. everybody's set with Paul and Diane yeah do you I, want I, to go on it? no I just I want to like go to the next point I I agree okay. whatever it makes sense but the but it also impacts the timeline. I think the, the who's on that committee is going to impact. I think February is really aggressive. I mean, assuming we were the way most committees get formed is people like us or other people in government will reach out and say, hey, you're you know, have you thought about will you consider? I think by the time we actually are able to raise a committee with a forum, we're going to it's going to be in the middle of December if we're lucky <laughs> and so then to have a deliverable on february 1st i think is super overly aggressive unless we could get you to be on the second person no, we only have you one. don't need me but yeah when i'm not a select board member i'd love to do it from i, I don't think need sidewalks in my there area. is some interest in town i think the issue right. we need to manage towards though is town meeting right and so i'm trying to give town meeting enough time including through the advisory and capital processes and work backwards and I, I feel like the select board candidly has done the heavy work of the tech consultant report that's about to come out in like a week that's going to be incredibly helpful and probably guide this entire sidewalk committee's work, I would presume. Mm -hmm. And so I think a, a large part of this is just community feedback. And I feel like we should be able to get that from now until February in order to confirm on sidewalks. And then the hard part's the money. I mean, the town meeting is all about the money. That's really what we're talking about. And so if we miss the annual town meeting, then you're moving into So fall. I imagine like the preliminary report, I think to kind of address your point, but also I think we're, we're kind of preliminary is, is whatever they can get done with the idea that we have to have, we want to have some sort of ask. I think the, the language of like, I had the language final report. Yeah. I don't think there's a final here. I think this is an ongoing work. Like there's a lot to be done. Yeah. 
and so that's why I kind of said, you know, let's just do, let's target February 1st for preliminary. And if the sidewalk committee says we need another month and they give us a reason, there's no problem, but we should have a date in there. I think, I, I think that's a way to do it. I have a date, be prepared. If we can move it, we can move it. If we can't, we can't. And Diane. Yeah. Just another comment on ex officio members. I really think, um, and if it falls our charge um, from this board, um, to involve at least in the initial stage somebody from the police department yeah. yes. because believe it or not they know where you know there's been trouble with a kid on a bike or where where there are pressure points in town that might works. not be so obvious i mean public works knows more about the conditions the police know you know they they do all the safety and trafficking so um anyway i just think that if we can read them in initially there used to be a, a, a traffic committee mm -hmm. I don't know whether you were. Were you on it's that one? It's actually a hell of an idea. So. Yeah, you, you, Jean had that in her. Yeah, in so her that thing. was one of my edits to in the prioritization and costing was to consult Cohasset Police. And the second bullet point, I'm happy to add it back in, Corey, if you want. I can just like verbally. I thought, I, it. I, thought I included it. Okay. I thought somewhere it was else. there too. Just yeah, move I don't it down it. to some of the. I think the I moved it down. I, I think it moved. Ex officio. Unless it's just a versioning people. thing. I yeah, I have that in final report, including Cohasset Police recommendations. Good. So Sorry. Built okay. in. Yeah. Okay. My computer went dead about 15, 20 minutes ago. Okay. So, yeah. so <laughs> it, it, it's certainly in there. So it's we're, moved on, it. we're on the same page. Sweet. About okay. But so do we have them as ex officio members of the. I, I don't think they would be ex officio members, but they're certainly directed to consult and use their recommendations. So, I mean, Chief Quigley will be, and I'm sure Paul will ensure that Chief Quigley's voice is heard and included in this okay. for sure. Any other comments on this? Are we the are we comfortable with the uh, February one? With the understanding we can move it. I have a question. So how do we get it out so we start getting volunteers? So we through the web page and through this. We yeah we get Justin to do a, a PR release. We ensure that the website has the uh, form enabled for this, yes. and then we can update because it was featured in the anchor. We run, have them run a story to, to how to how to apply. So that's kind of time is of the essence. Absolutely. Do okay. do we want to? I mean, is there? Do we want to define the areas of town that we're looking for? I think that should be deliberative among this board because I once don't, we have applications, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't think and we the, want and the consulting report. We don't want to tie our hands. A lot will depend yep. upon. Yeah. Who applied. But I think it's it, I think it's embedded in that document that we it are is. looking for people from that all over the right. Looking for all four corners. I yep. mean, you're going to have the Beachwood folks. They're going to want King Street. They're going to want Beachwood all the way down the dome. Yeah. I mean, so and we have to be realistic. So it's got to be broken up. It's got to be people from all over. Yeah. And I think the only other thing that I added in, but I'm I'm okay with leaving it out, is we do have some future things hovering out there, like town meeting on the King Street sidewalk. What happens there? We've got Elm Street, which we've agreed to talk about later. What happens there? I don't want those things to derail this committee. And so I do think as you go, the committee will incorporate any feedback we get from those other processes, if that makes sense. So it's interesting because I was worried about the same thing, and I worried that including the language would almost cause them to get derailed. So <laughs> yeah, I want, I them, want to, them to get Yeah, there. so we're on the same thing. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. Everybody satisfied? I say we move to approve it and then we move to appoint Mr. Grady. Second. Second. We have a motion to approve the uh, draft charge for the sidewalk uh, committee as presented. Um, and we'll have separate motion for appointing Mr. Grady. We have the motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion to appoint Paul Grady to the as the select board representative. Made. Seconded. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to appoint Paul Grady to as the select board a representative to the sidewalk and streets committee. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Abstention. Motion carries unanimous. One question for senior. Could you get back to the board about who you think should staff it? We staff the sidewalk committee. Let us know. I don't. Uh, yes. Figure it out. <laughs> Come back. Chief <laughs> Quigley has a, a traffic safety officer who I think would be. Uh, yeah, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, cool. That's why I said, or yeah. your appointee. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I have to. <laughs> 
get some oxygen and get ready for this. So, Chris, this is going out this Friday, this warrant? No, no, no. It won't probably go out till next week. It's got to be printed. printed. Okay. Printed. What do we got? What do we got? So in front of you is the draft warrant. Uh, you have suspicions on here first. Did you want to talk about how you want to handle those? Or do you want me to jump into the, the rest of the warrant? I'm sorry. I didn't so, the, so first up, uh, Jack, you noted citizens' petitions. I, I think the right. board, oh, yeah. do you want to talk about how you want to handle those Let's do first? the other stuff. And okay. All right. So, uh, if, uh, so Article 1 is done, which is awesome. Uh, Article 2, uh, unpaid bills, we have a, a package of very random ones, <laughs> uh, totaling 31, a little less than $32,000. And uh, we've reviewed them. With, it, 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 these are still being reviewed. And, and if any of these fall off, that's great. Um, and the, that's the number, though. We're not looking to go over that. And this, you know, any question about any of them? They're, 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 All right. They're so random. everybody all set with that? Yeah. Any to recommend Article 2? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Done. So, um, Stabilization. So I say there's, a, there's been a change to this. So because of what's, what's printed here? Yes. So, so let me show you. So in the third item, the second item, which says a capital stabilization, that's been increased to $150,000 because $150,000 of project was moved into capital stabilization. So it's a matched offset that increase. So um, what's the total amount now because it's a 625. Yeah. So, so we, we're not spending any more money. It's just instead of in the one time cost articles, they moved into the capital. Oh, makes sense. Okay. So, they preferred it to run through capital standards. Okay. So I would ask if you uh, want to revote that new number. Or so yep. moved. So second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. 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 Uh, article, article four. four. Article four. So the, this is uh, this is now the. Uh, the Anybody update. have any problems with Article four? No. Everybody Everybody's set with Article okay. four as presented. Move to recommend. Motion. Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Capital improvement projects. Anybody have any problems with capital improvement projects? Just one thing to note. Okay. It's like the Capital Budget Committee is deferring recommendations on time meeting on, on point number three, the vestibule, because it's still conversations. They have a, they're not opposing it, they're not in favor of it, they're just deferring because they want more information. So they recommend everything else. And, well, typically we would hold off on the advisory recommendation before we would vote our recommendation just saying the thing is i yeah i, I know the, the the yes and they're going to meet tomorrow so the problem is if, if i'm going to get your recommendations in unless you're going to meet next week which we haven't planned on because of the election um yeah i know I, that's normally the process they am um, what's what's the only one uh, the only one that they're, that they're deferring on is article four is, is project number three um, and I would recommend that the board defer on that if you're willing to vote on the others. And I know it's out of process, but well, based on the advisory committee meeting the other night, um, it seemed like there were questions about um, 11 and 12 to split those up, which we've done. And I think the the board's policy has been clear that we want to get this stuff done. So I'm comfortable recommending 11 and 12 before advisory because this is a policy thing and we can lead up. Yeah. <laughs> can I just ask a question about number 11, the Beachwood Playground repairs? Yeah. That's separate from the other potential CPC recommendation. Co correct. It's capital is willing to put money to repairs. They're not willing to put extra money into rebuilding the playgrounds. That could change, but that's the, their recommendation is just repairs. But we can recommend this. Wait. So if CPC does the 240, does this will that be a, move? This, this will be moved, yes. Okay. Okay. So we're going to pay. Uh, this would be this if CP doesn't move. This would at least cover the repairs that need to be done for safety. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Everybody comfortable with that? Yeah. So we can at least get something. No. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And, I, and if you're going to do anything, I would recommend you just uh, you just defer number three only, unless you want to vote that. I mean, I think we. Well, what do people want to do? I think we just move it forward. And, I personally, because we haven't heard about each of these projects, and typically we would, um, I would be willing to vote what capital budget has done a thorough job vetting, which means all of these except three, um, and we can just hold off. Wait, second that. Um, okay. So that was all a right. motion. Second. <laughs> I recommend. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
So it's basically making a recommendation yeah, to town meeting on all but three. Community preservation committees. So they haven't voted, they haven't met to finalize these things. That said, it's a select board's warrant. I confirm with council. So the recommendation is this stay on the warrant, Article 6. Um, and um, everything says recommendation at town meeting because that's what kind of it's going to have to wait for that. Uh, and then hopefully over the next couple of weeks, those votes will have taken. You'll get it before town meeting. <laughs> And everyone will, and then the motion packet will have everybody's votes. Okay, and and that's you're talking six. I'm talking six. Just just yeah, a, CPC. Yeah. Just a quick question on that, um, Corey. Have you have C, has CPC heard all of these? Uh, CPC has heard um, the first one. They have. We have not heard the second and the third. We have heard preliminaries. Uh, we haven't gotten the final total yet. We haven't been presented with an official number. What is CPC project. meeting? Uh, I do not have a date for that. Hopefully, um, as soon as the members can schedule a, a convenient time. When was the last time the CPC met? Uh, last Monday. So hopefully fairly soon. The goal would be to encourage them to meet as soon as possible to hear these projects. Because we're coming up on Thanksgiving, right? It's going to be harder and harder. To get there we go. Get it done. Yeah. Yeah. And they have to come together for a recommendation at town meeting. Presumably, they're not going to do it on the floor. No, no. We <laughs> have that done in advance. Yes. Just making clear. Okay, so six we pass. Seven. Seven's already voted on. Did we vote on six? No, we're no, 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 no. It's right. It's right. It's right. It's right. to vote on yet for six. My apologies, everyone. Seven, you've already okay. voted on. Hang on, one question on number six. Did yep. we vote to put this article with these yeah, yeah, items and, 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 and on the agenda? Before we're done, it, you're going to vote to put. You're going to vote the entire warrant that's presented tonight. To clean up any of that. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Thank Perfect. You. Thank you. Eight you voted on, nine you voted on, 10. Um, is Charlotte in the audience? Okay, so the uh, conservation agent is uh, available to, to, to go over with you Article 10 right now. Hi everyone, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes, yes thank you. Hi, sorry, I'm trying to get my video up. There you guys there are. There you Hi. are. How's it going? Good. <laughs> Good. How are you? Good. Uh, so I'll be brief about this one. Basically, what we're proposing here with these changes to the definitions is um, really not proposing anything new. What um, this language that where this language is coming from is from the Wetlands Protection Act. It's coming from our local rules and regulations um, for riverfront and vernal pools. And then we're also looking at some natural heritage and endangered species program language, um, as well as some other local bylaw language. So what we're kind of proposing is clarifying these definitions a little bit more as they're defined in the Wetlands Protection Act and our regulations, because um, really they do need to be in the bylaws. So we're really just trying to be consistent here um, and implement uh, that language uh, across all of our you know, regulatory documents. Um, so the language from the riverfront is mostly from the Wetlands Protection Act. And then the vernal pool language is mostly from the act and rules and regulations that <laughs> already exist for us. So it's section 26 in our wetlands rules and regulations. Um, and then also from some natural heritage and endangered species uh, guidance for certifying vernal pools. Um, so do you guys have any questions about the proposed language or is there anything I can further clarify for you guys? I did read it and I had to read it like nine times to understand it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I trust your professionalism. No, right. no, no. Make it tougher next time. <laughs> Sorry. No. I just have a very simple, this is not really for Charlotte, but just in the information summary, if we could do a hard return after yeah, yeah, revision and before vernal pool. We, just, we, could, we could clean the information just summary. Just clean it up just so it's very clear that we're looking at two well, separate yeah, so there's a bullet. Yeah, there's a yeah. bullet in the middle of it. Yep, yep, yep. I, I, okay. Thanks. Sorry. The, the format has to be fixed. <laughs> All right, any other comments? No, good work. I move we recommend Article 10 regarding the Wetland Protection Bylaws. Yeah. Second. Paul, ready for second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Finished. Motion carries. Charlotte, thank you very much. Thank you have thank to you stop guys. staying out so late. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'll try. Have a great night, guys. Thank you. Okay. okay. Article 11 is done. Yep. Article 12. 12 uh, advisory voted last week, 8 to nothing. You, you've all been given the, the long memo from Chief Quigley. Yep. Uh, this is part of the contract deal with them and the uh, you know, recommendation. And we've been over it several times. I move we recommend Article 12, removal of the Classic Police Department. Second. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention motion carries. And Article 13 is already done. So. Uh,
So, so you, you are now done with all of the warning that can be done. All right. I'll warn. Uh, there's just two more things to do. One is talk about how you want to handle the citizen petition question. And second, uh, you just need to kind of, you kind of need to vote to close the warrant, <laughs> to, 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 to vote the warrant, to close it, vote it, and then sign it. Uh, Tracy has the documents. Um, and then we'll, we'll be in the production process. All right. What, what do we want to do on, on this citizens? And that's in the NAV citizens. Petition. Well, it's both. Yeah, so it's the sidewalks and the NAV. But let's do them one by one. You want to start King Street? I think that's yeah, where King. these guys are. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, before we make a recommendation to town meeting, which we'll have to do on the floor, we would want to fully vet and hear from the proponents. My, my question with actually both of these is when would a, is it possible to accelerate um, the language of emotion so that, you know, because I know <laughs> with this King Street, um, it, um, in for, you know, this King Street, sorry, Warren article is uh, petition. There is no financial ask. Might there be one in a motion? And is that something we could hear about before we go to town meeting and make a recommendation? Uh, the short answer is yes, you can hear about it. My understanding, having talked to the petitioners, they're not seeking funding. They're just seeking a sense of the meeting. While the, I mean, while the language says very specifically in there, they weren't actually looking for money right now. They're looking for an affirmation that this is an important project that the town is taking seriously. Um, that said, we start to work on the motion. Um, yeah. It doesn't. It, yeah. So the, the motion is what is going to implement the, uh, you know, affect this. So that's right. Um, An advisory did uh, their vote was uh, on the basis they, they don't think town should be getting census in the meeting resolutions. So they town should only act on actual things. That was that was the basis of their vote not to recommend. Is that if it was an ask for actual sidewalks, that's one thing, but it's to affirm that it's a good is they, they didn't think that was a that, there's no meat on the bones yeah yeah correct uh, it's just, <laughs> so i'm very sympathetic but I, I i must say that we don't want town meeting to be a series of feel-good motions and affirmations um so i don't know what what is corey so my struggle is, you know, a vote to not recommend feels like it's we're not recommending it sidewalks and we're not doing that right that's and that's the challenge. I mean, what we just did tonight was we charged a sidewalk committee which had explicit things for funding and process. So as far as I'm concerned, we have we've done what we should do for the citizens petitioners. So I would I would move to not recommend it on the basis that we are doing it, um, but not it's not about the sidewalk itself. Why don't we refer it to the what do we do? Yeah, we'll, we we will we'll vote not to refer, but because it's can we actually refer it? You do, you do two things. So one, by the way, what you did what you did last time on a, on a sense of the of, of town meeting, you just didn't make any recommendation. You yeah. said just leave it to the okay. meeting, right? Yeah. That's one thing you can do. Would be no recommendation, right? Now it's not a it's not a recommendation. No, it's just no recommendation. The alternative is you can wait till town meeting and then do something at that. So that's the alternative. Uh, but I'd like you, you can also vote against it for roads and sidewalks now. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that was the discussion I, I tuned into the end of advisory on this one. And that was the discussion they had. Should we do a no recommendation because we don't want to kind of affirm this process of sense of the meeting? Or do we take no action? And I agree, I, you know. I sort of want to hear from the petitioners, but since we're up against it, you know, I would well, go I think along with I, the, I agree. No recommendation. I would, I would second if you're making the motion. Yeah. I would second. And no. for the purpose of the warrant, it's always good in my mind. It's better to have as many votes in here to acknowledge that we've heard it, but we can always change. Like, so if we have the petitioners come before us, we could then decide to recommend or not recommend or whatever. I, think well, I don't know that it is there a way of getting petitioners in front of us. I agree with you 100%. That way they don't feel like they've been kicked to the curb. No yeah. pun intended. Well, that's what we were supposed to do at the last meeting, but um, right. and we just ran up against the time clock. I, I think a vote to not to vote to not recommend is confusing to the average resident. Oh, who right. it's it. double negative. Yeah. Thinks it's a substantive. I know decision and so i'd rather just leave it blank because it's a sense of the meaning and so whatever they want if, if that's what the petitioners intended to be which i actually don't think is a terrible thing for town meeting um because 
there was, there was no position? Is well, that, you yes, know what I was what thinking? Last time. If we can, and I'm yeah, well, well, looking, how would at, I'm looking at, if we could vote to refer it to the new fields commission, then we can go to the petitioners or King Street and say, we didn't take a position, but we have referred it to our new fields. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at. You could vote to take no position. And which or no recommendation. Have well, okay. can you recommend a referral? Jack's point. I, yeah. And, yeah, and you could say you could state that uh, you know can referring we, the issue to the new sidewalk. Can committee. we, on the basis of what we have on this agenda, vote to refer that to the committee? And then we go to the King people and say it's moot because we referred it to the new committee. I just want to well, make sure whether well, the motion the floor could be. To, it's to technically not moot because. It, it just our opinion on it is moot. But I guess the question is, can we put in the warrant, select board recommends, rec, you know, uh, recommends referral of this motion to the sidewalk and say, yeah, she could just, I, I don't, I don't see why not. I mean, yeah. you know, and that, great, that yeah. puts down our position, which is yeah. we're going to take care of you over here, yeah. which is where it should be. And so they can still, can we do that, Chris? Legally, I, I I don't. Let's do it. Yeah, okay. I, 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 don't, I don't see. I don't see why not. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not sitting as council. I don't think this made a motion that we refer to. We second it. We have any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Uh, how about we amend it in the instance that this isn't proper that we make no recommendation, just to cover if council has an issue. What? what? I don't think council have an issue. Let's yeah. let's okay. let's push it. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 So so it's recommend referral to sidewalk committee. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 That's good. All right. It's the sense of the board. Whatever, whatever it's called. I'll make sure we get the right. Well, I, I'm safe, si si sidewalks and safety connectivity committee. Right? All right. So. <laughs> It should be the Angie. What? My, my, my sense. Sidewalk and Angie. Yeah. Can we? Let's try to. Go. Oh, you know. Nice. We're, we're running late. Um, my sense is that on the citizens' petition, that we have to decide whether or not we want to just take no position, which is not a bad position. Then we say, we're going to let the town tell us what they want us to do. Um, or we could um, say, we want the select board to meet with council and devise our own petition. Um, the other thing we can do is we can talk to um, town council and say what needs to be done to clean this up. And we can then take that cleanup legal to the petitioners. <coughs> and my understanding from the petitioners in Brian Host, who is probably the best person to deal with, is that he recognizes there may be issues. And then if we gave him some ways to clean it up to make it bulletproof, that that the petitioners would then move to amend it on the town floor. So that's where we are, Diane and then Jean. So first, I think because this is a bylaw, <laughs> I think us taking no position on it is not an option. I think we have to take a position. Okay. Um, um, second, I you know the the nuance always ends up in the motion so i think this because it's a substantive request for a bylaw for a law on our books that we do have to hear from the petitioners I and agree. i do agree that there may be um some council we can you know some discussion with council to, to figure out what the right motion should be, what is an actual form that is appropriate for town meeting and ultimately for um, for this bylaw. So I, I think we need to hear it um, from the petitioners. I think we need counsel there. Mm -hmm. And I think at some point we need to take a recommendation or you know recommend or not recommend, but I don't think we can sit back on a position on a bylaw. Jane. Um, if the select board's amenable to it, I'm happy to work with council and also reach out to the citizens petitioner to review the bylaw from a legal enforceability standpoint and um, see what enhancements, if any, we should consider. And while that's happening, I, f I, I would also like to hear from the public as well. And I know we're trying to get a meeting scheduled to incorporate any information through that process. And then the third, I think, to really just move this forward is 
I think maybe we make a recommendation at town meeting. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. I'm, I'm fine with that. Well, I only thought it was kind of what time is like any position we take, not across Sitchwood's about. Um, they basically infer, you know, what we discussed is that's, it's, it's, uh, we've got to be very cognizant of, you know, the dynamics going on behind that. So I, I would move that we make a recommendation at town meeting for article 15 in the interim, we're going to schedule a meeting with the citizens petitioners and all interested residents to hear from them. And I will also reach out to Council to look at the proposed petition along with um, the petitioners and or the delegates you know, see if we can work together. With what enhancements and I, I keep me apprised on that because I'm pretty was that familiar motion? with on that. That's my motion. That's motion. motion. One, two, three. Yeah, we have that Second. motion. Does everybody understand that motion? Say it again. Sorry. <laughs> So the recommendation is recommendation at town meeting. Yes. In the interim, we'll hold a public meeting yes. with everyone to weigh in, particularly the citizens petitioners, obviously. Yes, of course. And then I will work with Cohasset Town Council and reach out to the petitioners. And Mr. Senior. And Mr. Senior, okay. obviously. Right. Okay. Um, to see what, if any, enhancements we should consider and come back to the school board, obviously. So, well, what, if somebody seconds that motion, I um, did. Okay, sorry. Um, so, just a, a discussion point in terms of, I just want to make sure we do everything because you are an attorney. Like, yeah. I don't want the. I don't represent the town. Right. The town council. So, I, I want to make sure that Chris and and, <coughs> and town council are, are involved in any communication with petitioners. And then a question I have is, because some of the lead folks in town aren't actually on the petition. <laughs> I I wonder how that's going to get, you know, who presents this? Is it is it Barbara Whiff and no, no, Dick gonna, Avery? Because they're the first two. No, the, the line for the petition has got a line for the sponsor and then the speaker. And that's the speaker is for the petition is Tim Davis as filed. Okay. All right. Sorry. So I, it's totally I didn't see the full, yeah. Art, yeah. full um, okay. petition. Okay. 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 I just want to make sure that's clear. Everybody yeah. else had any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Um, so final piece that uh, motion carries unanimously. Go ahead. It's for you to vote to close the warrant, adopt it as presented this evening, and and then fix your signatures, which to the paperwork that Tracy would for Just one quick question. Yeah. It's subject to any advisory votes taken tomorrow night? Yeah, sub subject to any supplementation. Like, for example, we have to put the text of the right. actual petition right. in here, right? I just want to make sure if advisory yeah, yeah. weighs in on a few things. Uh, uh, it's it's subject to any and, and, and final votes and, and, and content edits that are necessary. So moved. Motion to close the warrant. Chris, finalize it, including with advisory recommendations, our signatures. So I think I caught it all. And anything else Chris said that I've caught. <laughs> all right. All those in favor so. signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. Close. It's done. Done. All right. Now, Chris, make it quick. <laughs> no, we do. We do. The board, as long as we're on this, we've got to figure out when we want to do this meeting. And um, I think we, we're going to have to do it here. Um, I think the format is going to be will allow a brief presentation from Tim Davis, but it's not his meeting. This is a select board meeting. And um, we need to keep him not to be the spokesperson as much as we can. And this is an opportunity for us to listen to the citizens. And I'm, I think that we would want um, Ryan Host to do the bulk of the explaining. I would recommend that we do it my apologies, did you have your hands up? I, was no. I mean, either November 29th or December 6th. I mean, the two weeks before town meeting that gives Jean all the time she needs. Yeah. We've got questions here, you know, and again, if we do it earlier, it doesn't buy us anything here. I mean, it, it just, I think if the more prepared we are, the better it goes. For the right. And I think we all should be aware that um, Tim Davis is not, it's not his meeting. And he is not necessarily productive. 
Just, I, I think that this is a, this is a citizen's petition, and yep. so I think we need to leave it to the petitioners yep. to yep. make their case. I, I think there. it's really important that we have counsel here because, again, this is we're potentially going to adopt the law, so we need to, as a select board, make sure we're comfortable with that. Should we schedule an executive session for the same meeting? Most likely. Well, we do have one issue, um, which Gene has, has brought up, which is if we have our counsel here and people ask questions, we might put the counsel in an awkward position because she oh, might have to be defending this and Situate will be there and may want to pepper her with questions. And you want to discuss how we can deal with that, Gene? I know it's a yeah, they don't get to ask our counsel questions. She's she's our lawyer and they can direct questions if they want to us for us to consider as we think about our recommendation and maybe what we want to do next. But ultimately, the council represents the town of Cohasset and I don't think we should be putting her in the okay. hot seat. So um, you're, you're all right with her being there, but no questions. I think it's important for her to be there and okay. listen and to answer our questions and to answer our questions if if we want um our questions should be done in executive session i think are well, we able to do it that way because this is no. this is nasty so we couldn't do a executive session to discuss concerns over potential outcomes uh well in executive in executive no can't we chris and we'll go chris so, i think okay. i think we can take I, I, this I, offline and have yes, a later yeah, discussion yeah. Okay. Um, I would suggest, though, that we reach out to the citizens petitioners and make sure it would be helpful if we could get two dates. Let's confirm the citizens petitioners can make it because now we're heading into the holiday season. And yep. so I want to be respectful of everyone's plans and obligations. Um, so I threw out November 29th and uh, December, whatever that second, December 6th. The, the two weeks before town meeting and after things. I am going to be out of town on the 6th. Let's throw suggestions out because I don't have my calendar here. <laughs> so I'm going to be. Um, why, why, don't I, why don't I ask that we just have just yeah, poll all of you? It. And, yeah, right. It's a good idea. idea. The productivity right. level started to go down. By the way, if you have dates that don't work, send them to Tracy right away, just so she can work around those right away. Could I, Tracy, can I also ask that you send us meetings that we already have scheduled for like select board meetings? Just because my, huh? I don't have them on my calendar, okay. and I'm in the middle of like tech. And, right, I just need to. We have a meeting on the 15th and the 29th. Okay. We have one on the 29th. Okay. Yeah. The 13th. Okay. Yeah. Which, I mean, depending on what we have going on, I don't know. It's tricky. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Did I hear you? Thank you. All right, well, I'll, I'll check on that now. Um, My only update, up to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just want to thank you, Chris. That was a very. <laughs> I'll be quick, I promise. Uh, I want to uh, just to thank everyone who worked very hard uh, to address the uh, water main break this week. Uh, it was it was in the worst possible place. Um, it, it was under the culvert. It was an 1870-ish water main that had been relined in the 90s. Uh, and uh, everyone jumped in, they got it done. Uh, there was a minimum of disruption because, you know, the Red Lion had a wedding and, you know, there was all kinds of stuff going on. So uh, Brian Joyce, I really want to thank all the work that he did, all the work the water folks did and the contractors came out. And also, you know, Justin who kept everybody informed. It was a nice team effort. Uh, in fact, uh, emergency manager folks are meeting tomorrow just to go over it. Uh, and Brian and water department are already talking about plans. They, it, there is an area of old water main down there. Uh, it's now jumped up the list, so uh, it's going to be a need. I, I, so by spring, we'll have a fake enough, I think, presented the plan uh, to replace more water main. So, but again, it was one of those unfortunate incidents, but it, I think it was handled really well. Um, and I, you know, everyone adapted, um, and uh, fortunately, it came at the very beginning of the workday. Uh, so everybody was on site. Uh, if that had happened in the middle of the night, it could have been a disaster because uh, there was a water was leaking out um, very, very quickly. Um, so, but again, I just want to thank everybody uh, who worked on that. Thank you, Chris. Selectman's comments. Gene. 
Um, as someone who didn't have water, I appreciate having water now. So thank you to the town. Um, and thank you to my neighbors who were patient about not having water as well. Thank you to everyone who kept our children safe and handed out lots of candy that they are hopefully not eating as we speak. Um, that's all I have. I'm good. I I'm going to pass. Paul? I couldn't add anything there. Corey? Uh, second, thanks for everyone being safe. Thanks for CPD right. doing their job Halloween night. Motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstentions. We are adjourned. Corey and Jack, I think there's multiple pages on that that you didn't sign. Oh. Uh,